In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Ghost, amen. Reverend Father, dear faithful, we mentioned that next Sunday there will be sung Vespers here at St. Isidore's for the first time. Some of you might be asking yourselves, well, what exactly is Vespers? Vespers is part of the divine office, which the priests, the whole church prays every day. You know, you see us priests with our breviaries, our black books. And again, you might wonder, what exactly are those books? Well, those, these books, the breviary is the divine office. And eight times a day, the priest prays from this book. And so it's good for you to know these things because the priest is actually praying for you. And in a certain sense, well, it's the whole church is praying and you're part of this church. So we're going to take a look today at what exactly is the divine office. First of all, these eight different times a day, these eight offices, here are the names. The first one which the priest prays is called Matins. It's actually the longest one. Ideally, it's prayed early in the morning. So Matins comes from Matutina, which means morning. The, uh, the Benedictine monks, they, they get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray mat, sing Matins. The monks, the sisters up in the convents, uh, it's really impressive. I was just down there last week for uh, one of our girls here, Bridget Eddy, took the habit at the convent. So th the Benedictines, they, they, they sing these eight offices every day. The priests here, the society priests, we, we sing three of them. And the rest we have to recite because it takes so long. Ideally, matins is in the morning, and there's lauds, which is also before mass, and then prime, which we all pray here together, all the priests at 6.30 in the morning. And then throughout, and then also throughout the day, there are the other five offices. Nine o'clock in the morning is terse. At midday, at no around noon, you have sext. And in the afternoon, 3 p.m., known. 5 p.m., vespers. And then we end the day with Compline. So you see the whole day, the church wants us to pray, to pray this divine office. These various offices are composed mainly of the Psalms from the Old Testament, the Psalms, most of which were composed by King David. There are 150 Psalms, and throughout the whole week, all of his priests pray those 150 Psalms. And then also the breviary includes lessons from Holy Scripture, other books of Scripture, commentaries of the Fathers, and other prayers composed by Holy Mother of the Church. The breviary was developed in the first centuries, kind of like the Mass. You know, the Mass, our Lord said the first Mass on Holy Thursday, and it was, of course, very simple. But, he, but God wanted, our Lord wanted, that the Mass in those first centuries would be developed, be embellished, and, and, be, and beautified with all these prayers. Same thing happened with the Divine Office. In the first centuries, the church decided, okay, these psalms we prayed on this day and these different offices throughout the day were developed. But by the sixth century, it was all fixed. So these, these traditions are very old. And the breviary that Father May and myself pray every day, priests have been praying for 1,600 years. It's, it's really impressive. So what exactly is the divine office? What are these various psalms and prayers of the church? Quite simply, it is the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is. You know, on earth, every day, our Lord prayed all day long. When he got up, when he went to the wood shop, throughout the day, and certainly a big part of his prayers would have been just praying the psalms. Of course, he's God. He knew everything, but he obviously knew the psalms by heart. And we can imagine that he would have prayed these psalms as he's in the morning, you know, when the dawn, when the dawn, uh, the first light of dawn, it was when the priest is supposed to pray lauds, actually. You think of our Lord praying these beautiful psalms, praising God on behalf of all creation. 
asking for graces for the souls he would save, asking for mercy for sinners, adoring his heavenly Father, and especially thanking him. Like this, uh, this leper, the leper who is healed today, returning with a loud voice, glorifying God. And he fell on his face and gave thanks. Let's read what the Psalms are. All those things right there. Adoration, thanksgiving, gratitude, petition. But our Lord wanted his prayer to continue throughout time. Just as he wanted his sacrifice to continue throughout time. That's what the Mass is. The Mass you're going to attend this morning. What is this Mass? This Mass is Calvary. In a very mysterious way, Calvary is made present to you. Same priest, the same victim. Remember, the only difference is the manner in which it is offered. Same with the Divine Office. The Divine Office, it is Christ praying through the priest throughout the centuries, praying eight times a day, using the lips of the priest. Remember, there's only one priest in the New Testament, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. All of us, all any other priest, participates in the one priesthood of our Lord. So he's our Lord. Jesus is the one who offers the Mass, who is praying the breviary through us. Here's a quote from a Cistercian, Irish Cistercian, Father Boylan. He says, A priest may be said to be the one who speaks to men in the name of God and who speaks to God in the name of men. In the pulpit and the confessional, he does the former. The latter function he does, especially in the divine office. So in the pulpit and the confessional, we're speaking to you in the name of God. When, we, when the priest opens his breviary and prays, he's speaking to God in the name of men. He's praying, he's praying for you. And when the priest prays his breviary, God hears not the voice of Father so-and-so, he hears the voice of his Son, his divine Son. And that's why it is so powerful, such a powerful prayer. It's not just a pers- the personal prayer of the priest, a private prayer. Of course, private prayers and personal prayers are important too. You know, God wants us to do both. God wants us to pray publicly, liturgically, vocally, together as, as, a, as a parish, as a church. He wants these vocal prayers. He wants us to pray the Mass. But he also wants us to pray individually because we're social and we're also individual. So he also wants that personal prayer, but but the, the liturgical prayer is more powerful because it's the prayer of Christ. I'll give you an example. What's more, what's more pleasing to God? Think of a pilgrimage in Lourdes, you know, these beautiful candlelight pilgrimages. 20,000 people come in the summertime from all over the world, and they're walking with their candles, praying the rosary, singing these hymns. It's really quite spectacular. And of course, very pleasing to Blessed Virgin Mary, very pleasing to God. Then imagine a priest on an airplane. You know, poor Father May has to fly every weekend, except when he's, when he's here. He goes to North Dakota, he's on the, he's to fly in the air, airports, the airplanes. Imagine a priest, he's next to a woman covered in tattoos and a man watching a movie, but he has to be praying his breviary. He's praying his divine office. What's more pleasing to God? That prayer of the priest in the airplane or that pilgrimage in Lourdes? Well, it's actually the divine office because, again, it's the prayer of Christ. So, dear faithful, again, the priest is praying for you. Christ is praying for you in and through the priest. But there's something even more wonderful, and that is, you can take an active role in praying the divine office. When you come to the church and you, you, you come and sing with the priest, whether it's the Vespers next Sunday or uh, every, every Thursday night we have Compline. If you want to come to Compline, which starts around 7 p.m. Compline, which is the, uh, the night prayer of the church. Again, very beautiful 
very simple. We also have Compline books in the back. But when you come and you, you join in, you blend your voice with the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God the Father hears the voice, not of Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. He hears the voice of his divine son. And then your prayers become very powerful, even more powerful. So it's very good that you pray the rosary, that you do your personal prayers. But when you join in the divine office, your prayer becomes the prayer of Christ. That's what happens. So we hope that next Sunday, the first time we do Vespers here, Hope that you'll be able to, some of you will be able to make it. It's, uh, again, it's very Catholic. It's very normal. In normal times, you would have a, a Catholic town, a village, and the church right in the middle or the monastery, and the faithful would come when, on Sundays especially, and they would pray Vespers, a pray Compline with the priests or with the monks. Of course, here it's tough because you all live so far away. Everyone, um, you have this beautiful church and everyone's, you know, 20, 30 minutes away. It's hard. It's hard to come back on a Sunday. There's a story in a great book, a great book called Path to Rome, written by Hilaire Belloc, the, uh, the great Catholic writer, English writer. When he was a young man, he did a pilgrimage from France to Rome. And in this book, Path to Rome, he talks about his adventures. It's, it's really really good. It's hilarious. It's beautiful. But he talks about when he's going through southern France, he goes into this town Sunday afternoon, late afternoon, and it's quiet. And there's, he's, he wonders, where is everybody? Then he got close to the church, and then he heard in the church, everyone in the village was there singing vespers. And he talks about how impressed he was with the faith of these people. But that was normal to come back on Sunday, which is the Lord's Day, to come back and to to pray the divine office. So hopefully ne next Sunday will be the first time, hopefully, God willing, one day we can do it every Sunday here. But at least next Sunday, what a, a joy, how much we will please God and also St. Pius X. You know, again, we see that contrast, you know, in the, in the city of Denver, It'll be, an, it'll be a normal Sunday. Unfortunately, a lot of sin, a lot of evil, a lot of ugliness going on. But here at St. Isidore's, we're going to do something which the disciples of Christ have done for almost 2,000 years. We're going to sing with Christ, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, and adore him in the Blessed Sacrament. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.